We're back to Authors Corner on the Total Education Network, TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook. And I'm really excited about, again, the, the Miami Book Fair uh, interview series. And one of the big things is to kind of promote how awesome the Miami Book Fair is. Everyone should go and attend the Miami Book Fair again uh, the 17th to 24th of November. The authors are going to be out there uh, signing autographs and a lot of great activities the 22nd and 24th. And I'm really excited to welcome to the program New York Times bestselling author Corinne Zalekis, author of Mother Mother. Uh, oh, it's nice to speak to you. So excited about the book fair. Oh, isn't it awesome? Isn't my isn't it just fantastic, Miami? It's just so absolutely awesome. yeah. What better place could you possibly go to in the middle of November, especially from upstate New York, um, like me? And then to just be around so many um, writers and able to pick their brains and talk about your favorite books. Well, and re- really, what's surprising, Karen, when, when you deal with this in, in in certain ways, is that again you get to be with your colleagues, the best and brightest in. Uh, authors and, it, and it, it's just such a it's such a great place to kind of trade ideas and and really learn about how you guys all were able to get there and the stories for sure a lot yeah of absolutely I mean writing such a solitary thing anyway can be so incredibly lonely and you have no idea what anyone else's writing process is like um, until really you get around other writers and get to talk about it absolutely absolutely okay so uh, again your your newest book. Uh, mother, mother, and uh, I was uh, reviewing specifically. It definitely seems like a real page turner, and also looking at the traditional family and how things can kind of go awry in so many ways. Yeah, definitely. It's um, my first novel. It is about. Um, <laughs> I don't think it will give anything away to say it's about a very dysfunctional family, um, and I sort of. I don't know. With it, I wanted to explore. Um, Sort of, I think we all know that you can be raised um, by the exact same people um, and still, as siblings, sort of have entirely different mothers and fathers. Um, so this one sort of told from two perspectives. One is um, William Hurst, and he's 12 years old, um, and he his mother is the light of his life. Um, she homeschools him because he has um, uh, some autism problems and also some epilepsy, um, and also it's told from 16-year-old Violet Hurst, um, who sort of hates her mother the way only a teenager. <laughs> girl can and it sounds like that the mother wants so much wants so much to have the opportunity to just have a traditional i guess traditional suburban family in a, in a way wouldn't you agree yeah yes definitely i think um uh, being normal slash maybe even a little perfect um is very important to josephine her the mother in this book um and really it's been hard for her to try to hold things together because she also has a 20 um, year old daughter who ran off with her boyfriend and had this late in life rebellion um, and sort of the family's been reeling from that ever since absolutely and, and it's it, it, and it's just like what's happening next how is this occurring what are we to do next and and, and it's it's just it's just that process it's a it's a, it's a frustrating process as well that you just want this dream family you want things to go so perfectly and yet life gets in the way and life we gets see in the way. we yeah. see that we see that with all the characters in your story for sure yeah, definitely. I think, um, oh, I don't know, sometimes in families, um, especially the dysfunctional ones, sort of how things look is more important to how they feel on the inside. Um, and I think the kids in this book are really frustrated and angry, um, and they sort of don't know what to do with that. Um, Violet Hurst, she's been trying to meditate and sort of get very zen about it all, um, and she's also sort of been experimenting with some mind-expanding drugs, um, really anything she can to come to terms uh, with what's going on in her family, and really, I think probably to accept, she really wants to believe that it's her fault. So eventually, there's this this kitchen accident. Um, uh, William gets hurt, and um, her family is sort of blaming Violet. She ends up um, under psychiatric evaluation, and at the start of the book, she really wants to believe that she's the crazy one and that the reason why they just can't get along in her family. Um, but certainly, <laughs> that would be the tidy solution, and it's not quite that neat and simple where the hearse are concerned. Uh, absolutely. And uh, and and how mom responds to this and dad responds to this. The question I want to ask is I want to get into some of the character development. But first of all, the question I want to ask, why this? Are you is this what you see around in in your life growing up in ways that everyone thinks is it's the perfect family and yet it isn't? Is that one of your driving forces to write this book? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, it's, you know, you write what you know. And I think anyone who um, read my last memoir, Fury, which was a little bit about um, sort of after I'd quit drinking in my years after writing Smashed, my memoir about uh, my binge drinking life as a teenager and a college student, I was about five years sober when sort of, you know, everything that I'd been using alcohol as an escape from came just flooding back, which was a whole lot of feelings and childhood memories. And I think probably this book um, began as a way to deal with some of that. Um, just, I, I think Will feels in particular just so vulnerable, um, and he's really scared all the time, even though he doesn't quite know how to name his fears. Um, even though Will is a word lover and probably kind of a burgeoning reader and writer, and so he kind of collects obscure words, um, probably in a, in a way to try to name these feelings that are just gnawing at him, this real anxiety. Um, but uh, in Violet, on the other hand, she, she has a little bit more intellectual understanding for why the people in her family are behaving the way they are. Um, and I think I sort of wrote this book because it really, I've struggled in my own life, um, sort of after my own childhood with a lot of anxiety and almost like post-traumatic stress disorder. And I think the two characters in this book really sum it up for me, that feeling um, that they, those of us who've had difficult childhoods, um, you've got that sort of primal terror that you see in Will. I mean, you have that intellectual understanding that you've seen his older sister, and it's kind of finding a way to marry the two, um, to feel your feelings, um, but to also process them. So what causes, you think, uh, situations that leads to uh, sometimes uh, depression, anxiety, uh, panic attacks? What do you think? Is it always the home life, or do you think it's other biological reasons? What is your thought? Oh, my gosh. Well, that's a huge question. I think probably <laughs> um, some combination of the two. I think um, uh, there's definitely... I think where I was concerned as a kid and also where Will is, is this sense that he really can't be himself and his family. Um, really that it's not even okay to have emotions in the feeling in your family because somehow if Will were to bring these emotions to the table, um, he would kind of upstage his parents and he's very concerned about taking care of his mother and he wants to reflect well on his mother, but he doesn't want to outshine his mother. Um, so I think that's a big thing. And there in Will's family, in the Hearst family, there are some personality disorders there. And I think it's something we don't often think about. Um, but it, it happens quite a lot that there are people in the world who are, you know, for biological reasons or the way they were raised, incapable of feeling empathy, of putting themselves in other people's shoes. And sometimes those people raise children, which is terrifying. Exactly. Now, with Josephine, what was the the uh, underlining way of coming up and creating that character? I mean, is it Josephine like the traditional housewife you see, and then and then really you don't know the true picture of her? A little bit. I mean, that said, Josephine, she is sort of in that space in her life where she um, she had kids, but she was keeping her career going. She was um, actually teaching art history at um, sort of the local community college, and she stepped away from that when um, William Hurst, her son, started having um, uh, some problems at school. Um, also, his, his, his autism um, was called into question. She sort of started getting him tested because she suspected that, um, and especially in his interaction with other people. He just wasn't quite normal. He was a little shy of normal. So when these things came to a head, she, she stepped away from work. She really made Will her full-time job. And I think Will feels the pressure of um, having to succeed because if he fails, then um, he, he's ruined his mother's world because he is his mother's world. And he's his mother's job at this point in time. And, and basically, uh, Will, by getting all this attention, the two daughters literally were left to do their own thing in certain ways. Would you yeah. say? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Will is sort of the light of her world. I think it's probably easier to, um, I don't know, separate her experience from Will's, given the fact that he is a boy, um, as opposed to the daughters. It's sort of hard to see them for who they are. She's sort of her own self-image, which is probably a negative self-image, gets in the way a lot. But um 
I don't know if Violet also has a very specific job in her family, which is that sort of in the narcissistic family sometimes or with a borderline personality disordered mother. They're really good at black and white thinking. People are either all good or all bad. Um, and Violet is very much the scapegoat in this family. She sort of needs to act up because, one, that's the only way she's going to get attention is to get this negative attention. Um, but also she's kind of like the release valve. So when Violet has these small indiscretions here and there, um, everyone can sort of turn to Violet and rant and rage. Um, some of their frustration that everyone keeps bottled up because I think in the personality disorder family, there's a lot of bottling up of emotions, and they've got to find some way out. Um, and so, therefore, the scapegoat comes into play, and that's Violet. So it seems like a lot of the family has some sort of mental issues or, 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 or baggage. Would you say dad has the same thing and he's able to do it by self-medicating himself in a way? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that he has found Josephine Hurst probably because um, she's very close to something that he um, grew up with. I mean, resembled one or both of his parents in some way. And I think um, he's not so comfortable with his own emotions. He hasn't really been allowed to have an identity of his own. So it's been you know, painful in some ways, but also kind of comfortable to just become sort of an appendage to this really um, powerful, because in her family, Josephine is powerful um, woman. But he, for for Douglas, he is struggling with some alcoholism, which is something I can relate to in my own um, personal experience um, in life after Smashed. Um, and I think he probably is where I was um, after I wrote my first memoir, which is he really wants to save his family. He wants to save himself, but he, he sort of thinks the key is just going to be to quit drinking or to get a handle on it. Um, and unfortunately, reality is sobering in many ways for Douglas because um, once that way to numb the pain is gone, um, he's just left with a whole bunch of emotions he doesn't know what to do with. So a lot of times, and I see this all the time, where we don't diagnose people with a uh some sort of uh, mental illness or disorder, so they self-medicate themselves, so we consider them an addict in certain aspects, and what it leads to specifically is lots more problems. If we can, as a country, come up with better ways of identifying and treating people that are having these issues and not just saying, okay, we're going to medicate them, but we're really going to get them the uh, mental uh, therapy and help that's needed, I don't think we'd have a lot of these issues and we wouldn't have so many addictions. I think you're right. I mean, I think for me personally, everyone always said, and I, I, I faced a little bit of heat after Smash and everything, people coming to me saying, oh, you didn't do the 12 steps, you didn't preach the 12 steps, um, what's your experience with AA? And really, for me, just going and sitting down and talking yes. to a therapist and working through all the, the childhood stuff from the past was just, uh, it was a savior. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know how I would have done it otherwise. You got to talk to somebody that does not have that uh, that emotional connection to you. That can listen to your story and kind of listen. And, and, and the key things: listen, and sometimes provide advice, but listening and understanding, so that you can kind of work out your issues, work out what's going on with you, and saying, "Well, the reason I did this." is because of this. And right. so this family, you created this dysfunctional family. What do you think the response of your readers are going to be, especially ones that have not picked up the book yet? What do you think their response is going to be? I hope they're really scared. Um, I hope that they um, I hope they find it kind of gripping. And, and I, I wanted to write the kind of book that you can read in two days. Um, and I hope, I really hope, you know, I've always thought that the stories we tell each other should really comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. So, I mean, I hope people who grew up in supportive, loving families can get at least a glimpse of what the confusion and terror that, that kids like Will and Violet Hurst feel every day when they know that something's deeply wrong yes. in their family, but they don't have the words to describe it because no one's really hitting them or abusing them in physical ways. It's a little bit more psychological and emotional. Um, and I hope kids who did grow up like William and Violet um, feel a little bit of comfort and know that you're not alone because, like I said, especially if you're the skate goat in your family, it's much easier to think that you have the problem, you're feeling the yes. wrong things, you're misinterpreting, and then it is to confront the fact that, no, there, there's some big issues going here, and once you look at them, the personality disordered family and parent, they, they're they all pretty similar. I think you're also your hope, Karen, is a specific that, that you're not alone, kids. This has happened in many families, and don't make it a genera generation thing. 
Don't continue yeah. this process. Don't lead it to your children's and their children and children's children. And all it does is lead to more and more dysfunctional families. Let's figure out ways to get uh, work things out, speak out against the atrocities. And if you've gone through it, get help. Medication and and, uh, alcohol and drugs is not the way to go. I mean, medication sometimes, but talking to people, kind of creating a closure like writing (laughs) or poetry or or some other emotional way to to kind of close this chapter in your life is the best way because we don't we don't forget these things. We're never going to move on in life. Am I correct? Absolutely, which means you've got to feel it, and you've got to, it takes a long time, but slowly, slowly, like, you bring these things up and become mindful of them, and the more mindful you are, the less likely you are to repeat the cycle. Well, Karen, I I really like this because I I like always looking at the family, and and one other point I'm going to make is that, you know what, no family's perfect. We all want to make this picture Facebook family. And you see it all the time now, Karen. You know, the nice house, the great family pictures with children, everything is perfect. And lots of people are on Facebook right now thinking that their lives are perfect. They're not. We all have our issues. We all have our skeletons in our closet. And I I appreciate you sharing first your skeletons from your first book, your memoir, and now sharing... Uh, hopefully a way for other people out there to share their issues and really tackle them head on and not let it live the the rest of their lives. So, Karen, where can we find information on you? Purchase your book, learn more about you, and see you at the Miami Book Fair on the 22nd through 24th. I know that our listeners will want to come out and meet you. I would love to come out and for them to say hi um, and to share their own family stories with me. Um, you can also find me. I'm on Facebook and Twitter, um, and my website is Um And, yeah, thank you so much. I mean, you're absolutely right. And kids don't need perfect families. They just need empathetic families and authentic ones. All right. Well, fantastic, Corinne. I appreciate you calling the program, and we're going to rock it out, and, and best of luck in, in Miami. Take care. Thank you so much. I'll see All right. you soon. All right. See ya. Okay. In Miami. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. You're listening to Author's Corner, and we'll be back in just a moment.